Good evening. It is so good to be gathered on World Communion Sunday where we celebrate our connection as the body of Christ, not just here at First United Methodist Church or the Anson Circuit, but the whole charge together, the whole community, and the whole world together is the body of Christ, and we share in the Holy Sacrament of Communion together. A first, uh, a few notes of welcome and uh, announcement as we begin. On fifth Sundays, we've been doing worship together, and so we have another fifth Sunday here in October on the 31st. So there's an early service at 9 o'clock at New Hope United Methodist Church, where we'll have an All Saints Remembrance for those churches of the Anson Circuit. Um, as well, we'll have an 11 o'clock service here at First United Methodist Church, and then afterward, there'll be a lunch of barbecue. So whichever service or both services you attend, you're invited to come um, and join together in lunch afterward um, to, as we join together in fellowship. This evening, as we gather as a charge, we're so excited to share in Holy Communion. Because of COVID, we'll do this a little bit differently, um, but we still want to invite you to come forward at the appropriate moment. You'll receive a little condiment cup with bread and juice, so you're invited to receive both and take them back to your seat and then take both together, and then you can dispose of the trash as you leave in the narthex. Hopefully this will give us the opportunity to come forward and have that special moment as well as maintain our physical distance as we uh, worship together. Um, and one more note, the um, uh, final hymn will come after the prayer after receiving, but Gail will lead us beautifully in music, and so you won't know a thing. Um, some of our music is in the hymnal, and some is in the black faith we sing, you'll find in your pews. God has welcomed us here, and God unites us together in the body of Christ across differences, across space, across time, and so we're gathered here in worship in gracious response. So let us stand together as you are able, as we join together in the call to worship. We have come together as one to worship in the name of God the Father, who created us who holds us and the whole world in his hands. In the name of the Son, who came into the world, who reconciles us with God. In the name of the Holy Spirit, who fills us with eternal life, who links us with all Christians and incites us to peace. We come together to offer our thanks and praise.
let us remain standing as we join together in our prayer for illumination. Nurturing God, we are hungry for good news. Let the heavenly food of Scripture nourish us today in the ways of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. You may be seated. If you wish to follow along in your pew Bibles, we will turn to page 498. Our Psalter is Psalm 63. O oh God, you are my God, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dwar and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I think of you on my bed, and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadows of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me. But those who seek to destroy my life shall go down into the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword. They shall be prey for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear by him shall exult, for the mountains of liars will be stopped. And now I bring you a letter on behalf of our district superintendent, Laura Auden. She wished she could be with us today, but she already had another meeting scheduled for this time. So she sends her greetings in this letter. Dear friends of the Anson Circuit and First Wadesboro, on this World Communion Sunday, I give thanks to God for you and for the ministries that God makes possible through you for the people of Anson County and beyond. Your faithfulness and generosity in mission and outreach make a difference. I trust that you have had a good beginning with your new pastor, Reverend Stacy Lundy. I know that you have warmly welcomed Stacy and Kevin into your communities and church families. You have adjusted to new worship schedules and have begun to work together in some new ways. Please know that working together as communities of faith is a sign and witness of God's kingdom. Jesus has called us to his ministry as his body here on earth, a body with many parts and a variety of gifts. God's vision is that we are stronger together and more fruitful when each interrelated part of the body works together. I give thanks to God for the ways that you are living out this vision as the body of Christ. I look forward to how your partnership will grow and deepen for the sake of Jesus and for his mission in this world. So many people are divided and separated over so many things. Now is the time for God's people to witness to the power that Jesus has given us to be ambassadors of reconciliation from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and to break down the dividing walls of hostility in Ephesians chapter 2. Truly, we are better together. Over the last 18 months or so, we have continued to navigate being church in the ongoing pandemic by embracing new habits and routines. Last year for World Communion Sunday, many were not able to gather or to share safely in the Lord's Supper, and some may not be able to do so this year. Nevertheless, I encourage you not to lose hope or give in to discouragement. As the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, come what may, God is able. As we join millions around the world at the Lord's table or in our remembrance of what God and Jesus Christ has done for us in the very giving of his very self on the cross, may we renew our commitment to follow Jesus wherever he goes. 
May our witness to the love of Jesus extend to the ends of the earth. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Reverend Laura Otten, URE District Superintendent. verses 1 through 3 and 6 through 9 found on in your pew bible on pages on page 635 come everyone who thirsts come to the waters and you that have no money come buy and eat come buy wine and milk without money and without price why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the, for, let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are, are, are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You can go ahead and grab that book. <laughs>
please be seated. Our New Testament lesson comes from Roman and Romans in the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 5. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. Here ends the lesson. On World Communion Sunday, we honor the ways that we are bound together in the body of Christ, and we know Christ more fully in the breaking of bread. We come as people who know brokenness. We bring our lament and come seeking healing and restoration. We lament the historic divisions between town and county. There have been very real barriers between us based on where we live, what we do, and where we spend our time. And there have also been barriers that we assume or imagine about one another, like some are stuck up or are unsophisticated. We lament the loss of potential relationships mutual mission, and communi communion. The last two years have been especially difficult. In the midst of the pandemic, we've had constant disappointment, unmet expectations, frustrated efforts, all while being asked to be flexible, creative, Our world has lost four and a half million people to COVID. Our nation has lost 700,000 people to COVID. Our county has lost 76 people to COVID. This is too many, especially as our local economy is depressed and our population continues to decline. We remember the days when our sanctuaries were more full. Our hearts desire for the churches we love to flourish and to be full of disciples. Our numbers are not where we want them. We know we are not alone in these trends. Churches all across the West and all across our country are experiencing the same trends. We long for community in the way that we have known it. Our leaders are fatigued. We come with our brokenness, like grains of wheat broken open, longing for communion. We come with our brokenness, like grapes crushed, longing for communion. At your table, Brokenness becomes a place of abundant grace. At your table, you bind us in communion with the Holy Trinity. You bind us in communion 
with one another. Move us, O Lord, from assumptions to open, honest communication. We thank you, O Lord, for binding us together for the sake of your kingdom, for the sake of Anson County. We thank you, O Lord, for the loving spirit of each church in this charge. For Long Pine. For New Hope. For Morgan. For Hurst. We thank you, O Lord, for the feeling of home and the comfort of your spirit we find in each church on this charge. We thank you, O Lord, for bringing fruitfulness in the midst of adversity. Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for nourishing us through the holy sacrament of communion. Those of you that are able, let's, ri let's rise for the gospel reading. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. This is the word of God for the people of God. There are a lot of reasons that I love United Methodism, from our connectionalism that binds us together for mission and ministry to many other reasons. But one of the reasons I especially love United Methodism is our practice of the open table for communion. Some traditions recognize that uh, being a Christian is being called by God and so they might separate the table just for those baptized or separate the table just for those who are in their membership. But as United Methodists, we're first and foremost Christians. And we recognize that this table is not owned by you or me. This is not even our table. This is the Lord's table. And God so loved the world that he gave his son for us all for our flourishing and so who are we to limit the table so the invitation in any united methodist church is for all who are invited to come to come and receive at the table of god's grace it doesn't matter whether you're presbyterian or catholic or baptist or whatever tradition or you don't even know christ fully yet if you hear the invitation of god you're invited to come. 
when we come to communion, we recognize that it is a sacrament. Augustine once said in sacraments, one, one thing is seen, another is grasped. One thing is seen, another is grasped. Whenever we participate in sacraments of baptism or holy communion, these are physical signs. We, we touch water, we touch juice, we touch bread, but a whole other reality is accessible to us through this physical thing. They point to and allow us to participate in the divine reality of grace. When we come to the Lord's table, we find communion. Communion is not just a word for the actual meal that we experience, but it is a word for fellowship and together, togetherness, belonging of the body of Christ. So when we approach the Lord's table, we find, we find community and we find that we are connected. World Communion Sunday is a special time in the calendar where we recognize that we are part of the body of Christ, not just in Anson County, but in the entire world. We're not just the body of Christ as United Methodists or Presbyterians. We are the body of Christ across divide, across creed. And when we come to the table, we, we find that we are bound together in Christ's body. And here, we're bound together in this charge, together in this community. And I'm so proud to be your pastor for all four churches and for the communion that we find together. And when we come to the table, we not only find communion with those warm bodies around us or those joining us on Facebook Live or YouTube later, we find that Already joining us here is the communion of saints, the communion of saints. Whenever we come to the great thanksgiving, we can visualize all those we love and who have gone before us, filling every empty space, cheering us on and praising God together with us. So I, I invite you to call those saints up in your mind's eye now. Those you have loved and who have graduated on to the church triumphant. Saints all the way back to Moses and Abraham and Ruth and Naomi, James and Paul, Lydia, Tabitha. Those saints join us around God's throne in communion, as well as maybe those you have lost in your family or dear friends that have gone on before us. They join us in worship around God's throne, and, and we can hear their voices if we listen carefully, especially when we join together in the prayer that the Lord teaches us. When we approach the table, we, we find bread, and we share in it together. But think about the journey that is taken for that bread to get in front of us. Seeds are planted, and they are broken open in the midst of the warm earth, broken open that something new may grow, whether that's grain or fruit of the vine. They receive nourishment and grow and flourish until harvest. Grapes that are planted become wine or juice, <laughs> and the grain that is harvested is milled to become flour which is then combined with water, salt, yeast, things to make it grow in a new combination, in a new way. And the yeast in bread is like a fresh breath of the Spirit, a little bubble infused in, into our midst, allowing us to grow and form and expand into a new reality. We share one loaf for we are one body, and we receive the same nourishment from Jesus. When we receive the bread, we can remember the stories of Scripture where bread has appeared, and we receive strength from them too. 
Abraham sharing bread with strangers, who he finds later is God in his very midst. The Hebrews baking unleavened bread in that first Passover meal before they are delivered from slavery and oppression and are sent on the way to the promised land. The manna in the wilderness sent by God to nourish God's people daily and to find a rhythm of grace and freedom. Elijah being sustained in the wilderness. Jesus feeding the 5,000 as he teaches them by the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus gathering with his closest friends and disciples and sharing that last meal with them. This bread is that bread, too. This is the greater reality we access when we share together in communion. This, this bread is offering of God's very self for us. When we come to the Lord's table, we not only find communion, we, we receive it. It's something we come forward to receive. We, we don't take it, but we, we come with open hands and receive a gift of God's grace into our lives. We can call it Eucharist, which literally means to give thanks. We give thanks for all of God's salvation history in the great thanksgiving. And we can call it the Lord's Supper, remembering God is the one who is the host here, invited to encounter God ourselves. And as we come, we remember Christ's sacrifice for us. But it's not a somber meal. It's one where we can enjoy God and we anticipate the banquet to come in heavenly glory. And we receive nourishment for our daily walk in faith. A fresh outpouring of grace for us, for our life, for this moment, for such a time as this. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, believed in the power of communion as a way to encounter God's grace so much that he encouraged us to partake as often as we could. He even believed that somebody who was seeking not yet a believer, receiving communion at the Lord's table might be the moment that, plate, that faith is fanned into flame in their hearts. Here, like the invitation in Isaiah 55, we eat and drink our fill, that which money cannot buy, but that which nourishes our souls. Here at the table, brokenness becomes wholeness, and we participate in a holy mystery. At the Lord's table, we find communion, we receive communion, but we become communion. We are communion. We are the body of Christ in this world. We are Christ in us, encountering the world and offering ourselves. In the liturgy, we acknowledge in union with Christ's offering for us, we offer ourselves as praise and thanksgiving, as a holy and living sacrifice. We are the fellowship of believers that make up the body of Christ, and we together are broken open to offer grace to the world. And we are a foretaste of the kingdom to come. So as we come, we who are dunked in the waters of baptism, we, we like the fruit of the vine, grow in fruitfulness and faithfulness, we take in nourishment and Christ's very self into our being. We grow in richness of heart and life, despite the difficulty of the growing season. And as we come closer and closer to the table, we, we find ourselves pressing in against one another as we press into Jesus, just as grapes are pressed together to make wine. As we are pressed together, we are broken open. And as we're broken open, we expect to find resurrection power poured out for us 
and for the world. At this table, we are reconciled to God and one another. We receive nourishment for our discipleship, and we remember Christ's salvation work. We find communion. We receive communion. We become communion for the world. Thanks be to God. As members of the body of Christ, we're, we're united together in Western North Carolina as the annual conference. And in our annual conference, some areas in the mountains have experienced severe flooding recently, especially in the Smoky Mountain District. So our Bishop Ken Carter has invited us to take up a special offering to go toward flood relief. So this evening we share in an offering uh, for that very purpose. Um, you can make checks out to First United Methodist Church and just make a note that it's for uh, Western North Carolina and we'll make sure that it gets to those who are helping with flooding relief. If you don't have funds or check and you still want to donate, just get that to your church treasurer and they'll make sure it gets to the right place in our conference. But, but we're united as communion <laughs> so that together we can have a bigger impact. And this is one way that we can offer ourselves an outpouring of gratitude, an outpouring for the sake of community and for our conference. So I invite the ushers to come forward.
You're invited to turn in your hymnals to the great thanksgiving uh, as indicated in your bulletin. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God of all creation, a source of all mercies, fount of love beyond all measure. It is fitting and right to give you thanks and praise and to adore you with grateful hearts and voices. For you wondrously have created heaven and earth, hovering in gracious care over all that you have made. You formed us in your image of love in the world. Yet even more wondrously, when we distorted your image, you call us back again and again, forgiving us, delivering us from slavery to sin and death, feeding, healing, reconciling, making covenant, and setting before us the way which leads to life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed be your name, O gracious God. For you gave us Jesus, who emptied himself that we might be filled, who suffered and died that we might live. He fed the hungry, healed the afflicted, ate with the scorned and forgotten of this world. He washed his disciples' feet and gave a holy meal as a feast of his ever-present love. On the night in which he gave himself up for us and the world, at table with those who would desert and deny him, he took bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper had ended, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, each of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, remembering Christ's life of ministry and his surface, his suffering, death, and resurrection, his ascending to glory and his abiding presence, through the power of your Holy Spirit. We come in praise and thanksgiving with these gifts of your love as we together proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts that they may be for us his body and blood. And so feed us with his grace that in union with Christ we may become a living offering to you. Transform us into the image and likeness of Christ, that we may faithfully serve others in his name, and look forward to the final feast in which all shall be gathered as one at your table, 
in all manner of things shall we well. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the communion of saints, as the children of God, let us join together as he teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. The world breaks us apart, making us think that we may never be whole again, but God's grace <laughs> bakes us together with the Holy Spirit into something new and gracious and glorious, filled with God's presence, that we might be communion for the world. And we share in the cup of blessing, God's grace poured out for us and for all, that we might be renewed and flourish in the ministry to which Christ has called us. The table is prepared. You may be seated. In just a moment, you'll be invited to come forward as you feel led to receive a cup with bread in it and a cup of juice. Take both of those back to your seat with you and then receive the both together. You can either dip the bread into the juice and receive both, or use, use it as a cup. But as you do, as you come forward, remember you are receiving grace from God's very own hand. Nourishment for the journey that binds us together in communion so that we may become communion for the sake of the world. Come as you are able.
Let us now join together in our prayer after receiving as printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now let us stand and sing together the summons found in the faith we sing. We have an opportunity this evening to be communion and extend the table. If there's somebody in your family who couldn't come, somebody in your neighborhood, someone in your church, a friend, somebody you know that hasn't received communion in a while, we have extra cups of bread and juice and you can take them to them as a visible reminder of God's grace and the way that God is incorporated into our life for the sake of the kingdom. 
at this table, we find communion, we receive communion, and we become communion for the world. So go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.